Do you remember me from last time? Amen. Have you applied some of the things I talked about last time? Have you have that close relationship with the Lord? Amen. The, every day to pray to the Lord and love God every day is very, very important to have a good relationship with God. And, uh, because when you have God's blessings on you, then you have peace and love and joy all the time. And also God will give you wisdom to handle different kinds of things. When I was, um, today I'm going to talk about how to build up our spiritual life. And on the way here, when a pastor picked me up, I asked him this question. How is uh, the church here? How is the ministry here? How is this country? And he told me that this country is suffering financially. The economy is not so good. Many people find it hard to find a job. Is that true? Now when I heard that, just on the way here, uh, you know, back from the airport, and I thought, when the people suffer, that's not good. It's something God wants to do something about. And do you care about it? And do you want to do something about it? It's not just, I want to find a job for myself, but how to fix the economy, how to help uh, the finance of the people, so that people have the support of the Lord. Now the Bible does say that, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to us. God doesn't talk about that God will provide for us when we seek His kingdom and His righteousness. At the same time, the Bible does talk about management, being a good steward. When you are a good steward, when you have the close relationship with God, and you fulfill your different responsibility, including your responsibility in your workplace, in your home, in a society. When you fulfill, when you do all these things that God wants you to do. At the same time as a close relationship with God, it's most important to have a close relationship with God. And at the same time we manage our life and our society. That way, the blessings of God will come. For instance, if you think of people, they love God, they pray to God, they obey God in many ways, but they don't do their responsibility as a family member or do their responsibility to the society, then they're not helping the society. They're not helping the family. So we want to build up every area of our life. So when I heard about that, I, I talked to a pastor about it, that um, We'll find some way. What can I do? What can you do? Join together. It's most important, it's not just someone else's responsibility. It's our responsibility. How we can help each other, to help each other to build a spiritual life and also to build up uh, the uh, financial condition of the people. So that people are provided for, so that people have the strength to, to serve God. When you hear, think about the economy, do you think, oh, it's too hard, I cannot do anything? Do you think like that sometimes? You know, it's difficult. But when we pray to God, God will give us the wisdom. Just on the way here, when uh, the apostle talked to me, immediately thoughts came to my mind that I received message from God that God will you know, motivate us to be joined together to do something for God, for His kingdom, for the people here. That we together to care about the kingdom of God. Now first I want to look at this passage. Second Chronicles 7.14 Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 I'll read it to you. If you find it, you can read it together. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Here it says that God will do a number of things, including healing the land. 
The land needs to be healed. The country needs to be healed. We need to be healed. And how can we bring about this healing? It has to be a joint effort of all of us together to say, Lord, you are our strength, you are our refuge, you are our only source of help. Because all help comes from God. All help comes from God. It is God who can provide for us. It is God who can help us. For instance, in Israel, when they went into Egypt from uh, it, uh, from uh, when they went into uh, Canaan from Egypt, do they have to start to farm the land? Do they have to start to do that? They have. Do they have to raise the cattle? Do they have to do that? Yes, they do. They do. They don't just sit there every day. God provide for me. God send crop drop from heaven. They don't pray like that. They work hard. But at the same time, it's most important, above all things, is to have the close relationship with God. And then God will bless the place. So the most important thing is that we have this close relationship and believe that God is the only source of help for us. Can we say it together? God is the only source of help for us. God is the only one who can heal the land. God is the only one that can heal my family. So we want to come to the Lord for strength, for help, and come in unity, right? Let's look at this passage. There it says that if my people who are called by my name, that we are called by God's name, we have God's name on us, we have the name of Jesus Christ on us, so we are called Christians. That if they humble themselves and say, Lord, we need you, we need you, we need you, we want you. And without you, we can do nothing. Without you, we can do nothing. We have you, so we can ch change. You know, one thing we need to change is pessimism. What does pessimism mean? It means that people say, no hope, no way to find jobs, no way to provide for ourselves. No way to change the economy. No way to help the country. No way to help the people. That's pessimism. Everything is desperate. But when we have faith in God, yes, we say, yes, Lord, we can come to you in unity. Can we come in unity and come to God in unity together as a whole body? Now, when you hear what I just said, I'm a foreigner. I don't belong to this country but I care about you. I mean, I'm not, I don't care about you because of some benefit for myself. I care about you because I want to see God's people blessed. When I go to other countries too, of course my main ministry is to train people for ministry. So I hope that you all will come every day to be trained for ministry, to be transformed in ministry so that you can serve God together. So I pray that you have this heart. But I also want to help the people in their own ways. I don't have the financial ability to help each one of you financially. I cannot. I don't have the ability. We are just a small, we, I just have a small organization called Global Fire Missions Ministries. It's a small organization. But we do it by faith that I go to different countries to help them. And when I see people suffering, my heart goes for them. My heart goes for you. When I see this country is suffering, my heart goes for you. Do you care about this country? Do you care about the people here? Do you want to say, Lord, we want to seek God for help? We want to come to you. You are our only help because you are God. You are all God Almighty. So when God's people come to Him, humble themselves and say, Lord, we need you. We need you. Every one of us needs you. So we join together and then we shall come to Him, humble themselves and pray and seek the Lord and seek the presence of God. Seek His face. That means seek His presence. To pray is the way to connect to God. 
to connect to God, to seek the face is to have a strong presence of God, to seek His strong presence. So we want to come to God and to pray and to seek the strong presence of God. Now it's very different to pray in the strong presence of God and just to ask for help. Now some people just pray like this, Oh Lord, I need money, please help me, please help me. Oh, I need finance, please help me. I need help in a family, please help me. I need a husband, please help me. Just ask him for help. But in the Bible, it talks about first seek the kingdom of God. First pray for the kingdom of God and first to love God and worship God and God will bless us. God is wonderful. Actually, when I came today, there was a great miracle. Let me tell you what miracle it is. Yeah. Even though, you know, I, I still have a little trouble, but the trouble is small compared to what happened. I transferred from Hong Kong to Johannesburg and then supposed to transfer from Johannesburg here and I slept and I missed the plane. Actually because I, I missed the time, I missed the plane. And, and then I, I prayed to God, please help me because I went to the counter, talked to them and they said they cannot do anything. I have to talk to the agent that sold me the ticket and I called and it's, it was difficult. And then I prayed to God, please, you can change something. Yes. You can do something. Yes. And I went back to the counter and asked the person. And she said, the plane turned back. The plane could <laughs> take off. It has some problem. Wait. It could take off. Amen. And it just came back. No so I got on the plane yes. again without any charge. Hallelujah. At first it will be difficult. First to get a seat. Second to get back. But God turned the plane back and yes. I could get on the plane. Glory. And God can do something miraculous yes. in your yes. life. Yes. He can do anything. Amen. I mean, yes. I don't want the plane to come back. I don't know what God will do. I just ask God, please help me. But when we have a close relationship with God, it's very important. Yes. That we humble ourselves and say, Lord, I need you. And we pray to God and seek His face. And turn away from our sins is very important. To turn away from our sins. That we say, Lord, please help me with our, our sins. Our depression. Depression is sin. Pessimism is sin. Why? Because pessimism is not believing in God, saying, oh, we all suffer, it's always suffering, there's no way to change. That's a sin. Not living in faith. Anyone not living in faith is sinning. And we say, Lord, there must be a way. There must be a way. So we repent. Lord, please forgive our pessimism. And forgive maybe sometimes our laziness. We say we cannot do anything, so we just lie down and sleep. And maybe we try, but then we gave up. But we say, Lord, help me to believe that it's possible. With you, it's possible. That we can be hardworking. We, first, we have to have a close relationship with God. And then, we want to ask God for wisdom to handle our different problems. And then we have to be hardworking. You know, I'm a hardworking person. God has gave me, given me many teachings, but I had to keep raising myself up in a level of ministry. I had to keep raising myself up. If not, I'll stay in the same level and I will slide back also. I will slide back. If I don't continue to work hard and follow God, first to have a close relationship with Him, and then next, to raise my teaching so that my teaching will get better and better, that I can help the people. Last time when I visited a country with financial problem, and then God gave me the heart when I went there. I talked to them, and then they told me their needs, and then I went back to Hong Kong and I raised some money. Now this time I did not raise money. This is, my ministry is not to raise money to help people financially. I, I did not raise money to help the country financially. I raised money to help them to build up industry to provide for themselves. That they can work 
for themselves to build up industry. And we can all find ways. For instance, for many people when they're poor, what they do? In the backyard, they might grow crops, they might raise chicken, they might raise other animals. So these are ways people can do. But this only helps in a small scale. We have to ask for wisdom from God. And we humble ourselves and seek God's face, pray to Him and seek God's face, and then turn away from our sin of laziness, pessimism, and not following God and not obeying God. And then God will hear, hear us from heaven. God will hear us from heaven. So tonight we'll pray together, Lord, we need you, we need you, we want you. We need you. Yes, Lord, we need your help. And then it says to turn from the wicked ways, and then I will hear from heaven. So God will hear us from heaven. Just like today when I pray to God, please help me, and then God help me. You know, at first I wasn't, I didn't know what plane I would take to come here. But then later, the plane turned back and I took the plane here. So it was a miracle of God. And right now here, it looks like it's hard to change the economy. It looks like it is hard to change the economy. And I heard that this country has 60% Christians. And I asked the apostle, how, about, how is their love for Jesus? He said, many of them are just so-called Christians lukewarm Christians and that is why this country is not so blessed if we all follow God and love God blessings will come to us if we all join together in this church and love God and love the churches around us and help other churches God will be pleased with you when you love God he will be pleased with you when you have compassion on people God will be pleased with you when I went to this country that I told you about I saw something in the Christian areas the Christian did not cooperate they did not work together what did I see you know the place was not taken care of the place was dirty the uh, sewage system was not working the sewage was not working and the sewage was staying in pools and puddles when they walk on us you know, uh, on the streets, there were uh, puddles of water from sewage. It's terrible. But I also saw garbage there. Where did the garbage come from? It came from the Christians who threw the garbage. They did not think of improving the place. They just say, I cannot do anything. Can we do anything? Yes, we can fix our family by the help of God. We can fix our life, we can fix this country step by step. And we can first fix this church, make this church strong and st becoming stronger and stronger. When you hear this, do you say, yes, Lord, I am willing. Yes, Lord, I'm willing. I need to come to you for help. Let me tell you one testimony. A while ago, I just, three weeks ago or so, I went to a church to preach. And there was one person who served in the church. She's not a preacher. She helps in the church. But she told me, one time I prayed for her a long time ago, maybe two years ago. When I prayed for her, in five minutes, she received a phone call from a company that hired her. I prayed for a job for her. And in five minutes, immediately she received a phone call from the company. It, it's God's way of showing it has something to do with the prayer. Hallelujah. I'm not saying it's me, it's God. Yeah. But I'm saying if we trust in God and come to God, God will hear our prayer and He will perform miracles. Yes. If the people join together, and I also ask the Apostle, can some people contribute some money toward this uh, way of building up the uh, economy? Now, we're still trying to talk about how to do it. I don't know yet. But the money I have, because most of the money I have has to go to missions. We are a missions organization. I want to go to different countries to build up the spiritual life of people. I just put in some money from our organization to help you financially. 
but it needs your help too. It needs your help. But you might say, I don't have money. But even if you contribute a little bit, you know the um, the widow, when she had no money, but then she contributed just a little money from her, Jesus said, you know, this is more precious than the rich man who contributed a lot. So even when you can contribute a little, a little, and pray for the country and pray for the people, and then God will bless you. He will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. We'll pray for God to bless this land and bless our country, bless our family. That we'll say, Lord, please help me. You know, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. His kingdom, first, what does it mean? His kingdom means the kingdom of grace, kingdom of salvation. That people can enter the kingdom of God. So you pray that all people can be saved. Do you care about that? When you have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you can pray for people to be saved. You know, on my way here, on the plane, I saw a Japanese woman. Japan is one country which is very hard to reach with the gospel. This country is very resistant to the gospel. They don't want any foreign religion. They just want their own religion. And I talked to this woman about Jesus. First, I did not start with talking about Jesus. I first listened to her. Asked her how she is, what was she doing, and asked about her family, and care about her. And then I asked her about her religion. And then I told her about Jesus, about the miracles, about how real God is. And, and, and then she asked me, so do you hope to go to heaven? I said to her, I don't hope to go to heaven. I know I will go to heaven. I don't just hope to go to heaven. I know I will go to heaven. And I pray for many people. And pe many people experience God right away. And I pray for many people. And they were healed. And I saw many people have demons driven out. And then she asked me, what are demons? Because she did not understand that in English. You know, so I tried to explain that she has to look up the dictionary in her cell phone to look up spirit, demons. What does that mean? And then I said, is it okay I pray for you? And she said, yes. And I prayed for her. After the prayer, I asked her, did you experience anything? Did you experience peace, comfort? She said, she, she nodded her head. And then I said, what? What have you experienced? She said, I saw flowers. I saw a garden. I said, you are seeing a vision. God gave you a vision. I'm so impressed. I told her because many Japanese don't want Jesus. Because they didn't know Jesus is the only true God. And because you are so open to Jesus. So Jesus opened your eyes to see this vision of the garden of flowers that God can make her life beautiful and also she told me look at my eyes her eyes were shaking the power of God was upon her and I said God is so good you are so good because we want to seek first the kingdom of God and his presence will be with you first you want people saved your neighbors your friends they might say they're Christians but they are not following Jesus in many ways they're not praying to Jesus. We have to pray for them. We have to care about them. That's the first meaning of seeking the kingdom of God. Want people safe. That you will approach people, care about them. First care about them. Don't just tell them about Jesus first. Because then they will say, well, you're just preaching to me. But if you care about them, they will listen to you. And then you care about them, listen to them, and help them in, in any way you can. And then you can tell them about Jesus and you can pray for them. And then Jesus said, when you seek the kingdom of God, all these things will be added to you. And also, second meaning of seeking the kingdom of God is let God be the king. Because kingdom means where God is the king. Let God be the king in your hearts. 
in your life, in your family, in your place of work, in your church. Many Christians just believe in Jesus. They just go to church when they have time. They just go to church when they want to. They don't put God in the first place in their life. You know, I always see God as very loving, very kind, very good. I see God in every, everything. I see God all the time. I say, God is so good. I, you know, whenever I experience anything, when I experience peace and joy, I say, God is so good. Hallelujah. It's very important to have response of our whole person. Respond with our mind, with our hearts, with our feelings. That when we see God, we will want to respond with the whole person. God, you're so good. Hallelujah. When I saw God's miracle provide for me to fly here without paying extra, I said, God, you're so wonderful. Hallelujah. I said, God, you're so good. Hallelujah. And my wife said to me, God really likes you. <laughs> and I said, God, you're so good. So I hope whenever you experience God, you say, God, you're so good. God, you're so good. Respond to us with our feelings. Let me tell you, I've gone to some countries and I pray for these people and they experience God. And I said, really appreciate God for what God has done in your life. They could not laugh. They cannot rejoice. They just thank God without much joy. It's, I saw it in some countries, people don't smile. Why don't they smile? Because they, they have been so burdened, so much pressure, depression. They forget about the joy of the Lord. The Bible talks about the joy of the Lord. They forget about the joy of the Lord. Let me ask you. Have you forgotten the joy of the Lord? Does the joy of the Lord exist in your life? Do you laugh? Do you rejoice? Do you thank God for things? Hallelujah! God, you're so good. God, you're so wonderful. I see God in many things. And I, I think about God all the time. Do you do that too? That is seeing, seeking His face. I see God in everything. For instance, when I drink water, where's my water? Over there. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Everything I see, I think of God. I think of God all the time. And I hope you too will think about God all the time. Whenever, whatever I see, I think of God. When I drink water. When I drink water, I think of God. Created water so wonderful. When I came, when I was eating, I watched a video on a on a plane. The plane was about animals. I like to watch animals more. <laughs> and uh, and and there was one place that there was a water pipe that was leaking, and the water was shooting up. And there was one animal catch the water. The animals know that water is good. They like water. They need water. This land needs water. When you drink, thank God there is water. Thank God water is so good. Water doesn't have taste, but it's so good for our body. It's because God created water so wonderful. And God can create us with feelings. You have feelings, right? But many people have lost the feelings. They don't laugh anymore. They don't rejoice anymore. Because every day is painful and under pressure. So people don't laugh anymore. The feeling needs to be restored. And one thing about training in preaching. You know, I'm training people to preach, to teach. I tell them. Don't just preach with the mouth. Don't just preach with the mind. Preach with the spirit. Amen. Preach with feelings. And when we tell people about Jesus, tell people about Jesus with feelings, with the spirit, and with smile. 
And healing that comes to us also involves healing of the feelings, healing of the soul, healing of the mind, healing of the, of the feelings. You know, healing of the mind is important too. When I heard your apostle talk about the problem in the economy here, God has given me a sharp mind. Immediately I say, what can this country do? Does this country, does this country depend on import all the time? If a country depends on import all the time, that means the economy will not be very good because they always need to buy food, buy everything from the outside. Can we provide for this inside? And then you can build up the economy. When you can provide for yourselves, then you build up the economy. So that's the mind to say, how can we fix this? The mind comes from God too. How can I fix it? It's important that we we're healed spiritually with a relationship with God, and with a relationship with God that your mind becomes sharper and sharper. You know, I, I just turned 65. I'm 65. Last time I was here, I was 64. But I'm still sharp. My mind is still sharp and fast. And any time I have to preach, immediately the ideas will come to me. When I see difficulties, ideas will come to me. Because I keep myself in the Lord all the time. Do you want to be like that? To have a sharp mind. If you have a sharp mind, then, then you can find ways to improve your situation and also build up the economy of this country and you know, of, of this community. So we want to rebuild the spirit, the mind, and also the feelings. It's very important. So this evening, when I pray for you, I hope you come to God and say, Lord, you're so wonderful. You're so good. Respond with feelings. Look at me. When I preach, do you see my feelings? <laughs> you know, many pastors say, no, I, I can only preach like this. No feelings. But God has created us with feelings, right? Animals have feelings. Do you notice that? Dogs. Do you have a dog at home? <laughs> Not too many people have dogs here, right? <laughs> too expensive, right? <laughs> <laughs> but do you know dogs get very excited when you, you know, it's your dog, when you come home, the dog will be very excited. Dogs have feelings. They wag their tail. <laughs> God created people and animals with feelings. But many people hide the feelings. What happens is they cannot rejoice anymore. So that's why Jesus said, Worship the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. The whole person, the whole person worship God. The whole person healed. We need that. And then, this country will be healed. We need the whole person healed. Our mind healed. And our compassion healed. God has given me the compassion. When I go to different places, I see the people. I care about them. I care about your needs. Do you know why I care about your needs? Because God cares about your needs. God hears you. God knows your needs. But He also sees that some people's hearts are not so open. So God sends me here to come to open your hearts. And so tonight, I hope that you say, Lord, we want to come to you. We come, want to come to you with a humble heart and pray and seek your face and then turn away from our wicked ways. We want to follow God and we want to have our spirit, our soul, and our emotions healed. So the whole, whole person is healed. So every day when I wake up, I can wake up with joy. You know, when you have joy, your mind will be faster. I have, you know, done training in preaching. And sometimes some students say, ask me, okay, this Bible verse, how do you preach? Immediately, ideas will come into my mind. Immediately, I will tell them how to preach on that topic. Because when God heals your body, He will heal your mind and He will also heal your emotions. And then the whole person will be free and has a lot of energy and creativity. 
Do you want creativity? Creativity, that means you see a situation, you think of ways to improve. So tonight when we come to God to pray, I pray that you will really say, Lord, please heal my mind and respond to God and thank God for everything. When I, every day I, I look at different things, I thank God, I like God. When I eat the food, I like God. God is so good. And when I look at the flowers, I like God because God has created beautiful flowers. Flowers, you know, I know you, maybe you don't see many flowers here in this country. You can see flowers in a, on the internet. <laughs> flowers are very beautiful, right? It's like a pretty face. That's God showing a pretty face to live our spirit and say, thank God, hallelujah. God is everything. God has done is good to us. God give us joy and peace so that we have strength. God give us food and water. God give us creativity. I thank God, God give us creativity. God give us friendship. Thank God we have friendship. Thank God when you talk to people, they are not like robots. When you talk to people, do they respond? They respond. But if they respond with joy, that is even better, right? So try to respond with joy, with smile. Can you smile at the person next to you and say, God loves you. We want to smile more. Can you smile? We want to smile more. Now, let me tell you, the difference between a sweet smile and a bitter smile, some people smile like this. <laughs> it's a bitter smile. It's so simple to smile like that. <laughs> because you're burdened. So you, <laughs> you cannot smile freely. Can you smile freely? Oh, <laughs> thank God. I have God. Thank God I have God. Lord, I want to come to you. I want to come to you in unity. We want to come to you in unity. Can we smile? Show your friend a sweet smile. <laughs> and show God a sweet smile. God, you're so good. God is 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 smile. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He is so good to me. God loves me so. God loves me so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Heal our soul, heal our spirit, heal our mind, heal our feelings, our emotions. Oh Lord Jesus, heal our whole person. Open our heart to come to you. Lord Jesus, we need you. We need you. Come heal the land.
Thank you. 